So the roof in the new shed to workshop is definitely rough to say the least. Not only am I missing some of the shingles, all of the overlaps aren't even working in the direction that water flows. So today I'm gonna to start upgrading this roof to a corrugated metal roof. That way it's perfectly suited to the Joshua Tree Desert on Modern Builds. So welcome to episode three of my shed to workshop conversion. I'll be sure to leave links to all of the articles and videos that I learned from before installing this metal roof down in the description. Oh, I'll also leave a link to episode one if you wanna check that out too. First on the list was removing the old drip edge and this came up easily by hand. A flat shovel did a great job of getting underneath these asphalt shingle rolls and separating it from the plywood on the roof. These roofing rolls are a really common option because they're affordable and easy to install, but they don't last forever, so it's time to get rid of this one. I'll be using 29 gauge corrugated galvanized steel panels. These are gonna reflect a lot of sunlight and help keep the roof cool. Also, they will be waterproof rather than somewhat water resistant, which is the roof that I had currently. I took this shot after everything had been cleaned up and you can see that the OSB decking is in pretty good shape. So I started laying down the underlayment, which is a water resistant layer between the galvanized metal panels and the existing OSB. From what I read, this step isn't necessary in a desert or low moisture environment, but I know a lot of people are gonna be watching this in a lot of different places. So I laid down a layer of this membrane across the whole roof making sure to overlap each pass by about six inches on each panel. I used a scrap block of wood to make sure that I had everything tucked up where it needed to be and I had room for the purlins which I'll be installing next. Overall, this step went by really easily despite the wind and these plastic cap nails served their purpose great. These 1x4s that you see me installing are called purlins, and it's what the sheet metal is going to attach onto. It's a lot like making a face frame for your roof that ties all of these 1x4s into the rafters underneath the OSB. Now this gives a little bit of rigidity to the roof, which, let's be honest, it could use it, but more than anything, it creates these horizontal rows across the roof that allow me to screw anywhere that I want to for the sheet metal panels. This is gonna allow me to pre-drill all of my holes knowing they'll always hit these one by fours that are attached to the two by four rafters. At this point in the project, I was excited. The old roof was completely covered and it was time to see how this sheet metal lined up. So these are the galvanized corrugated metal panels that I'll be putting onto the roof. This will be super waterproof and it'll reflect a lot of this Joshua Tree sun. I picked these up from my local Home Depot and I was lucky in the sense that one 10 foot and one three foot section fit this roof perfectly with an inch and a half overhang on each eave. And I made the three foot panels by cutting six foot pieces in half. This was really easy to do by spring clamping all of my pieces together. That way I could batch cut all of them with my angle grinder. So I just Googled and found that 29 gauge metal is 0 0.013 inches thick. So cutting through seven or eight of these panels was not very difficult at all. Next, I'll pre-drill holes in the panels where they connect to the one by fours. But before you do, make sure and bring up a couple pieces to test because I did that and I realized that one of my purlins was not placed where it was supposed to be. In fact, it was one of the most important ones. It's where my two panels meet. So I just scooted those one by fours down and now it's time to pre-drill these holes. But before we do that, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Omaze. Omaze raises money for charity by offering chances to win incredible prizes and experiences to those who donate to partnering causes. It's the most classic win-win. Charities get a huge boost by partnering with Omaze, and those who donate get a chance to win something awesome on top of getting that good feeling by being charitable. And the Omaze prize that I'm featuring today is insane. You could win a Mercedes Sprinter van with an $80,000 Vansmith conversion. Wow. That's a four x four Mercedes Sprinter cargo van 
plus $80,000 worth of customization from Van Smith. You all saw my school bus tiny house conversion, so you know how into this prize I am. Plus, contributions go to support Access Fund, a national advocacy organization that protects America's outdoor climbing areas and conserves the climbing environment. I climb all the time here in Joshua Tree National Park, so this is also a cause that I can really get behind. So if you would also like to donate and enter for your chance to win a free Mercedes Sprinter van with $80,000 worth of Van Smith customization, make sure and follow the link down in my description. That is omaze.com slash builds. Once again, that is omaze with an O.com slash builds. Thank you, Omaze, for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to the build. One of my favorite buys from Amazon are bulk drill bits. They're a great deal and especially good for projects like this, where I needed to drill a lot of holes that were, I think, 3 16th inch. I broke a couple bits, a couple bits went dull, but it was nice because I had, I think, a 10 or 20 pack. Now it's time to throw down our first panel, and I used the same 2x6 block that I did earlier to make sure that I had an inch and a half overhang on each eave. And I also made sure to install this foam closure on the end of each panel. That way water and wind doesn't get underneath the corrugated metal. Each panel should overlap by two corrugations and you wanna make sure to tighten your screw down enough that you squeeze that rubber washer a little bit, but not so much that it will crack and break over time, compromising that location. On panels like this, you should install screws on the ridge of each corrugation, meaning the top of each mountain rather than in the valley of each corrugation. If you think about it, water is gonna shed off of the roof in those low valleys. That's why you don't wanna put screws there. If one of the gasket fails, then that's a potential leak point. My roof is not perfectly square, so I fudged my panels around a little bit to make sure all of my reveals stayed consistent. But I got pretty good results, and I let this last piece overlap by about six corrugations so that it hung over the edge the right amount. Okay, so those are all the full panels, and now we need to do the small pieces on the ends. I didn't worry about pre-drilling the top row on these pieces since I didn't think there would be a good chance that they would line up perfectly with the adjoining panels. So I just pre-drilled the bottom row where they connect on the eave side. If I were to do this project again, I would have installed both the 10 foot and three foot section and then worked my way down the entire roof rather than coming back and doing the small pieces later. It was a little difficult working all of these panels underneath the ones that were already down, but it wasn't too bad. These sheet metal screws are self-tapping, so they don't technically need to be pre-drilled, which made this install really easy. I was able to use the hole on the 10 foot panel as the guide to drill through both panels where they meet. Throughout this whole Shed to Workshop series, you've been seeing me wear a whole lot of Ariat workwear. They're an incredible sponsor of mine, and in today's video, you've been seeing me wear the 8-inch Cascade Boots M8 Cut Denim and the Rebar Cotton Strong Work Tee. You can check out these items along with all of my other favorites on my landing page on Ariat's website. I'll leave a link down in the description. I'll also leave a link down in the description so you can get 10% off your first Ariat order by signing up to their email list. I really only have good things to say about Ariat gear, but let's go ahead and get back to to the build. Thanks, Ariat. And finally, with this last three foot panel installed, my new metal roof was complete. As you remember, this shed needed a roof. I mean, bad. So let's go ahead and check out this after. And there we have it, in all of its glory, one metal roof. This was my first time installing a project like this, and I am so happy with how it came out. It's far from perfect, but it's gonna be way better than the existing roof that was on the shed. Oh, and it was actually pretty convenient the day after this got installed, it actually started sleeting and snowing a little bit here in Joshua Tree, so I got to see the roof in action, and it worked great. So there you have it. Thanks a million for watching. I wish it wasn't so windy, that way I could record a better outro, but make sure and follow me on Instagram, at Modern Builds, and we'll see you next time on episode four of the Shed to Workshop series. Bye, everybody.